All right, so scientists, some, are sounding the alarm on a so-called solar superstorm sounding that the alarm. could, and this is important, underline the word could, eventually wipe out the internet for weeks or even months. Solar Scientists super have revealed that a new solar storm is coming, and it may have dire consequences for the world. Reports suggest that this storm will be the biggest humanity has seen in 100 years and may have the power to take down Earth's entire technological infrastructure. Entire. So what is the cause of this imminent wave of disruption? How will it impact humanity, and do we need to be worried? Let's take a closer look. The imminent solar storm. Indian astronomers have recently issued a cautionary alert, expressing concerns about an impending powerful solar storm yep. that has the potential to disrupt global internet connectivity for several weeks. Researchers have made a noteworthy discovery regarding the correlation between the sun's magnetic field and its sunspot cycle, offering insights into predicting the peak of solar activity. Mm -hmm. The sun has a very predictable, but actually quite mysterious cycle of activity. It gets very, very active every 11 years, and then it settles back down to more of a peaceful existence. Initially, NASA projected that the next solar maximum would commence in late 2025. However, a recent study has disclosed of an course. accelerated timeline, suggesting an earlier onset most likely in early 2024. Okay, let me stop this for a the second study. and say something. As you're looking at this, think with me about the technological glitches you're seeing, cell phones, the way things are having power outages, the internet, Facebook, some of this, and I believe a lot more is to come. And I'm gonna go into this in depth just a little further in a moment, but listen now. This is exactly what the Spirit of the Lord began to talk to me about all the way back in September 16th of 2023 when I had a vision where I was sleeping uh, in, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I woke up in the Spirit in Las Vegas, and as I was there, I heard the Spirit of the Lord say these words, what happens in Vegas or what's happening in Vegas will not stay in Vegas. They were under a cyber attack. I believe we are headed for a cyber pandemic, a cyber collision. And there's going to be a rise and more of a rise. They're going to blame it on solar flares. They're going to blame it on other nations. They're going to blame it on Russia, you know, the Red Dragon. They're going to blame it on all this stuff. And it's all for a purpose of where we're headed here. We're coming to a valley of decision. And there's so much more we're going to get into. Let me show you another more recent solar flare video just from uh, a couple days ago, March 11th. Look at this. We're starting with the last 24 hours on our star. Keeping, it, that the day keeping began it on our grid. Right after the morning show with an impulsive solar flare from the sunspot group that's beginning to depart. A few other minor pops occurred and we've got several plasma filaments to keep an eye on. And although impulsive, the flare did appear to have a significant working of the local corona. And a faint CME signature can even be seen on SOHO as well. The initial NASA endless spiral for the event shows a potential glancing blow from the weak CME towards the middle to latter part of the week. It'll be relevant, but not scary. Now, why am I bringing this out to us? Let, let me just look right at you. I'm bringing this out to us because I believe this is a mechanism by which they will say something is happening that is not happening, but then they can get everybody on the same page. Everybody goes, oh, solar flare. Or everybody says, oh my goodness, uh, interference from another party. And then they'll be able to shut things down and God forbid, shut down the entire global World Wide Web or something else. Um, and if they begin to push that narrative, I got to tell you, I got hope in all this. I'm not in any way intimidated, scared, or shrinking back. I sense a very strong response to this. I'm getting the word of God also today because we don't talk about this stuff to scare you. We say it to prepare you and then bring you to the word of God. But let me go into this a little further uh, with what I feel is happening. I believe that the times are accelerating. We're seeing acceleration of things. That's why God has called us, I believe, to raise up a million clear-eyed, clear-minded reformers to go win a billion. I call it a million for a billion, raising them up through media, people just like you watching this, uh, those who partner, those who stand with us. Uh, we're going to continue equipping you, training you, doing everything we can to bring you hope in real time, but also, like a watchman, look at what's going on in the world. And so you're seeing all this, this crazy stuff going on. 
And then yet, just in the last few days, we saw the uh, Academy Awards. You know, the Academy Awards where all the perverts get together and talk about their accolades and, and what they've done and, and all the things in their godless celebrations of, of whatever. But I'll tell you what, we need people at those places to be light and darkness. I pray for these people. But really what we need to do is have our nation humble itself, just, to, just humble itself, soften its heart to God and begin to turn away from some of this stuff and begin to see where the Lord is... Uh, is going to shine mercy. Because I believe right now we are in an extended time of mercy, no matter how bad it gets. And I'm telling you, there is a cyclone, there is a tornado of challenge that's coming, and we're about on the cusp of it. But God is with us. You don't have to fear it, please. You don't have to be afraid of this mess. But I also want to say to you, it is coming. I have a sense over May. Changes I saw quarter one and in quarter two, but then in May, there's going to be these changes that are either public or they will be very, very um, private. I'm just putting an eye here because that could either be, you know, in, in the public eye or very private. But in May, there's changes that are going to be adjusted. Things are going to happen there. And then I see very strongly, obviously, the end of summer, you go into that, that quarter three narrative, um, and you're going to start to see, man, like a river of challenge. I saw new characters. that they're already deciding on, and then they're going to make many different plays here in May. Um, and then through the summer, it's, there's going to be a rolling in, and there'll be new characters in August. Oh, my goodness. Get ready. Get ready for August. Now, they may allow the Manchurian to just continue to drift right on into this mess. They may allow that. But I also believe that there's going to be new characters. There's things happening. You still got Kamala. You got all this stuff that, you know, the Lord showed me her face several years ago. So I'm looking at all the things I do know. I'm not trying to speculate with what I don't know. But I do have a sense that this is going to be a very wild time right here. And there's going to be changes. There's going to be um, a lot to be said about August. And get ready. I hear the Spirit saying, get ready. And then... We're going to know what we're up against completely. And there will be that river, as you've seen me draw before, from quarter one to quarter three. This river and new characters uh, would be in the river at this point. And there was 45. And uh, he had a decision, or actually he was ready, but we needed to pray. We had to pray to get him across the river and into um, I saw just a, a red October and a dark November. And then I saw, man, 25. Fire. Okay? Yay! <laughs> Here's what I want to say, though. With all this, 25 fire, 26 pick up sticks. I think there'll be a right sizing in 26. I think when we get to 27, there's going to start to be, we're going to find our footing. I just want to declare, man, get out the leaven. No leaven in 27 and more of heaven, amen? But you're looking at that, and then I believe 28, we're going to see all of this really coming to a cyclone, almost to a point and a punch where we come into that time frame. So we got a lot we're looking at here, and, and I have a sense. And the big word I have, now hear me, and I'm trying to convey this the best I can, but it is veiled. This is a veiled, the whole thing, just bear with me here. The whole thing, like prophetically, when I've been praying about this today, I see veiled. It's like it's all veiled. You know in part, you're prophesying in part, but it's so veiled. There's so much of that's, that's just simply veiled. And the Lord is saying, I need you to trust me and peace will lead you through this time. Act in faith, stand up in righteousness, fight uh, in, in a godly manner, spiritually fight in prayer is what I mean. Uh, begin to do what the Lord calls you to do, but it's all veiled. It's veiled and it's hazy in some of these areas because there's so much confetti, so much talk uh, and all that. And the Lord is just saying, I am speaking, but you got to follow me. you got to follow me closely and I will lead you to the other side of this time. I truly will lead you to the other side and it's going to be well with you. 
it will be well with you. I'm telling you right now, sorrow may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. There will be a joy, but this eclipse is a sign. This veiled scenario is a sign. There's so many things we're looking at. Look at the Hollywood actors. They're a sign that they're controlled by the elite, global, wicked, lizard, mafia overlords. You're looking at what's going on at the Super Bowl, how you began to see Taylor and uh, her joke of a you know, guy on the field, whatever. You're looking at all this stuff that's going on, and honestly, it's an insult to the righteous. It's an insult to what's happening, and this Luciferian nasty system is trying to manifest, and people are too busy talking about, la, 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 I'm going to drift off to heaven again, la, 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 and, and all that stuff's happening. And what's really taking place is we need to get in the Word of God, we need to know the hour of our visitation, recognize the value of decision, exercise discernment on the times, and begin to realize God's going to take us through. You're going through. You're not going to lose. It may be dark in Egypt. We may see outcomes to this. God forbid we see the Manchurian candidates stay in for another four People would say, don't even say it. I don't want to say it. But I'm telling you, there's a lot on the table that if we don't participate, he could go back in, she could go in, or another character could go in, and we get, begin to see a frustration of the will of God. And that is why we have seen over and over and over again this word about the Kansas City Chiefs repeating itself. That's why we keep seeing these do-overs. The Lord spoke to me and said this was a do-over year, but not for the purpose of losing. He's saying, take another shot at it. It's a do-over for the purpose of winning. It's not a do-over for the purpose of losing. It's a do-over to win. It's a do-over to get to the other side. It's like saying, hey, you took a shot, you lost. A righteous man may fall seven times, but they rise again. This is another opportunity. In today's world, there's a lot of noise and sensationalism by many claiming to hear the voice of God. They cite their predictions and their own experiences. Now, some are legitimate and some are not, but how do we know the difference? In some ways, prophecies become a mystified topic. Yet as global chaos is obviously increasing, it is imperative that we must hear and know the voice of God and true prophecy. I'm Joseph Z, and I just wrote this book, Demystifying the Prophetic. Now, it's taken me my whole life of walking through the Word of God and my own encounters and experiences to bring this to a place where we land at biblical truth and sound doctrine, yet absolutely celebrating the precious gift of prophecy. In this book, I deal with everything from trances and dreams, visions, deja vu even, different types of prophets, we talk about it. We even cover the topic of false prophets. How do you determine who's true and who's false? We talk about discerning the times, navigating strange encounters. People talk about angels appearing to them, entities appearing to them, they hear voices. All of these unique things we begin to deal with at a very powerful level with this book. I bring you straight to the written word of God. And I want to say to you, isn't it time we understand the purpose of prophecy? After all, it is the spirit of prophecy that gives testimony to Jesus. It's time for results in your life. It's time for you to begin demystifying the prophetic. This book will help you. I promise you need this book. It'll break you out of containment. It'll bring you to a place of clarity and it will open up the understanding of the voice of God and prophecy functioning in your life by the written word of God. This is gonna really help you. I encourage you to get your copy today by going to josephz.com. I wanna say a very special thank you to our partners. Whether you've been a partner with us from the very beginning, or if you've recently become part of our partner family, we simply wanna say thank you. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you because it means so much that you're standing with us. We're accomplishing a lot together. And I'll tell you, if you're interested in becoming part of our partner family, I'd encourage you to go to josephz.com or text the keyword GIVE to 719-259-0029. You know, we want to welcome you to the family and we'll be calling you. If you become a partner, we call you regularly and we love talking to you. Our team calls you. It's not a call center. It's our team. We love our partners. I hope you'll consider it. I hope you're praying about it. And I hope you become a part of our partner family today.